Between 1880 and 1915, five Indiana artists studied abroad, then returned to their home state and began painting scenes of Indiana in the Impressionist style. They were T.C. Steele, William Forsyth, J. Otis Adams, Richard Gruel, and Otto Stark. It was after a major exhibition in Chicago in 1895 that the Hoosier Group received national acclaim. These same artists were among the first faculty to teach at the Heron School of Art when it was first established in 1902 and had a major impact on the training of the next generation of Indiana artists. Although the acclaim of these artists has faded compared to other American Impressionists, such as William Merritt Chase, an Indiana native who moved to New York, and Mary Cassatt, an American Impressionist who painted in France, their work is still highly collectible and is held in collections of a number of state and national museums. Museums with the works of Hoosier Group artists in their collections include the Han Mansion Museum of Indiana Art in Lafayette, the Indianapolis Museum of Art, the Indiana State Museum, the Sydney and Lois Eskenazi Museum of Art in Bloomington, the Richmond Art Museum, the David Owsley Museum of Art in Muncie, the Swope Art Museum in Terre Haute, DePauw University in Greencastle, and the Midwest Museum of Modern Art in Elkhart. T.C. Steele's home, House of the Singing Winds, State Historic Site in Nashville, Indiana, is another place to see his works in person. The House of the Singing Winds website has an extensive digital gallery of Steele's work and an article about the artist by Rachel Berenson Perry, the former fine arts curator of the Indiana State Museum. The best history source for information about the Hoosier Group is the Indiana Historical Society. The IHS blog on April 14, 2016 featured an article called The Hoosier Group that was concurrent with the History Center's exhibition Indiana Impressionists, The Art of T.C. Steele, which ran from April 21st to July 9th of that year. The Historical Society's magazine, Traces of Indiana and Midwestern History, featured an article on The Hoosier Group in their summer 1991 issue. Their digital collection includes the digitized catalog of the first exhibition of the newly formed Society of Western Artists, of which Adams, Forsyth, and Steele were founding members. The best art source for information on the Hoosier Group is the traditional fine arts organization. Their resource library includes a collection of articles and essays honoring the American experience through its art. The site also includes articles on the art history of each state and an encyclopedia of America's distinguished artists containing thousands of biographies of historic artists. Other good sources include the Google Arts and Culture uh, site, which has some information on the Hoosier School and on each of its members, ArtSmart Indiana, which features digitized works of all the Hoosier Group artists except Gruel with information about each work, and the Indiana Artists Digital Collection, available through the IUPUI University Library, which contains digitized catalogs of many of the art exhibitions in which the Hoosier Group members participated. Several books also provide good information on the topic of the Hoosier Group, including The Hoosier Group, Five American Painters by Judith Vale Newton, The Best Years, Indiana Paintings of the Hoosier Group, 1880 to 1915, an exhibition catalog by the Indiana State Museum, and Paint and Canvas, A Life of T.C. Steele by Rachel Berenson Perry. There are several special considerations with regard to sources for this topic. Because many of the Hoosier Group paintings are held in private collections, it can be difficult for scholars to see the wide range of the artist's works. These primary sources are valuable, fragile antiques, so that collecting and transporting them to a central location for a major exhibition is challenging. 
As Stephanie Galler describes in her IHS blog on the process of retrieving loaned works for the 2016 IHS exhibition of Steele's work, even road vibrations can dislodge fragile paint, and each painting had to be carefully wrapped and the IHS van retrofitted to minimize possible damage from the, transporting the works to the Historical Society in Indianapolis. Another issue is the difficulty of accessing digitized images of works of art. According to CAM, this is partially due to the continuing preference of many artists and art historians for print monographs, and in part because image reproduction rights remain embroiled in issues of copyright. Information on the Hoosier Group is not widely available, and when seeking information on the individual artists that comprised the group, I found that there is much more information about T.C. Steele than the other artists in the group. Although Steele was regarded as the group's spokesman during their active years, it would be interesting to explore what other factors led to his greater acclaim in our time when all the group members were highly regarded in their own time.